But what's hard is going, yo, yesterday I got nothing from working as hard as I could. Nothing happened from that. I'm going to do the same thing again today, but I'm going to try to go harder. That's the hardest thing in the world, mm -hmm. to get up every day and give 100% and, and be in the same position that you were each day, but mentally know that you're trying and trying and trying. That's a real grind. All right, so we're going to take a break. We just got some stuff in the mail. So we got our two belts from Alki Digger. We're about to see if these uh, fit. We're going to pause on what we were working on. And then we are upping our program um, this time. And we're going to do the white paint marker. Devin went over this on his video where he does the nut and bolt. Basically, you know, you see high-end shops and mechanics put a line through the nut and bolt or the the bolt head to the body of the the item, the bracket or whatever. So you can make sure nothing's turning. Um, we're going to try to up our program uh, to that and mark everything so we can just do visual inspections on the car because I really hate nut and bolt in the car. And then we got our new bolts in, new used, or not used, open bag, I think. Um, basically, this was like a wholesale. So the bolts that I did order were the wrong ones. And then when I went back on the internet to try to find the correct ones, I ended up being able to, I'll open it here in a second, to get 50 bolts, oh, it's already torn open, uh, 50 bolts for the same price that I paid for five from another, uh, from another seller. So like I said, I've preached it a hundred times. Anytime I can buy in bulk, I buy it because this will not, this will not be the last car we build on this channel. Just a little secret if anybody's watching this video gonna go ahead and let y'all in on something for the future this will not be the last complete race car that we build on this channel um so we are we want to stock up on every single thing that we possibly can whenever we can get a deal on it so when you can get 50 volts for the same price that you pay for five you jump on it so let's let's see here i think we need a three um let's put these on and uh let's see if we can finally put our belt drive on um if so then we've got a couple more wiring to do and then we'll be able to get first startup in hopefully sunday if not this sunday the next weekend for sure if we don't make it this sunday let's see what we got all right so i have dropped the ball again uh messed this up again i don't know how i am two for two on the mess ups um so this past past time um, the bolts that we ordered, the five of them that we ordered, uh, they wasn't, they weren't much, but, um, the thread wasn't correct. It didn't go in there and I double checked, uh, where I took the old bolt, this one to the hardware store and I physically screwed this into, uh, one of the things up there that tells you the sizes. And then I took a picture of the bolt screwed into that nut with that size. I went home and I found the length I needed for that thread pitch and ordered it and it was wrong. So I was pretty sure that they accidentally sent me the wrong bolts, but it was only five of them. They weren't that expensive. I said, screw it, we'll throw it in the toolbox. We'll order, we'll try it again, order the same ones again um, and see if we get the right ones this time. And that's when we just found these 50. And sure enough, it is wrong again. I'm pretty sure what our issue is, is fine thread there versus coarse thread. This is the thread we need versus this one. Uh, it really don't look like fine thread, but you can tell that the thread is definitely wrong. Um, so I really feel like our issue is that we we might have the size right, but uh, we're dealing with a fine versus coarse thread um, situation. All right, pardon Turbo John talking in the background watching this video and didn't play in the film, um, but we are good on the belt. So we are, uh, we're good on the belt. And the other one that I have is shorter, but you can see Right there, we have plenty of space to pull it in. So we're good to go on the belt. Uh, we just need to get bolts to bolt this freaking thing up. Oh, buddy. Happy Saturday morning. Filling these transmissions with these little universal um, dipsticks suck. Now, I actually have a new dipstick that I'm pretty excited to show y'all. Uh, I've had it for a couple months, but we haven't talked about it or put it in. Uh, don't know if I'm gonna put it in yet. It's a pretty cool piece. We resealed the trans uh, pan, the transmission pan. 
uh, to hopefully take care of that leak. If you remember in previous video, we resealed the plug on the side of the transmission pan, and I just switched the drain bolt from a traditional copper style washer to one of the steel washers with the rubber uh, insert um, inside of it. So the washer that was on here was this thing. I don't know if that's the culprit for the drain plug leaking or not, but we went and got a variety pack uh, from Advanced Auto Parts. One of these, it comes with all the different plugs and we utilized the little steel washer in there that has the rubber drain plug. So we're gonna keep filling this thing one Dixie cup at a time and um, get this thing back filled up eventually. We're gonna run out this morning and try to figure out our bolt situation, see if I can get one local at the only hardware store that probably stands a chance to have it here in Wilmington. And uh, if we do, then we can probably get first start up here on Sunday. All right, we went to the big hardware store down here in Wilmington near Wrightsville Beach, uh, Craft American Hardware. They have a ton of freaking hardware. It's a pretty good freaking hardware store, I'll tell you that. Uh, total $13 for six bolts. Uh, we got two sizes near this, so a little shorter than this and a little longer than this. Um, well, it's about the same. It's the same size, pretty much side by size, side by side. But you gotta remember, we gotta add the thickness of that shoulder down in there. Okay, that little shoulder down in there. Um, so then our next option was I got long, but I don't know if they were too long. So I, just, I got both sides. It wasn't about to make two trips. So we're gonna start with the long ones, of course, because we would rather have, um, we want as much thread in there as we can possibly fit but I'm not 100% sure if it will fit in there without bottoming out. I don't know how deep uh, these bolt holes are. So let's get this blower pulley put back on and try these long ones out. And we may finally have the freaking answer to our problems and we can maybe finally get a belt on this thing. All right, so we finally got our um, mandrel put on after all these weeks. So you can see we're already using the paint marker. So I'm marking stuff to make sure it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't turn now of course nothing on my car is straight uh everything's crooked and jacked up uh, because it's garage built with hand tools and um just not straight not accurate so your pump mounts off your motor plate but if your motor plate is not perfectly straight with the motor then the belt's not going to run perfectly straight with the crank and you can only imagine garage built how hard it is to get that perfectly straight um, now originally when i built did the motor plates what i did was i bolted them tight to the engine and then i just put the tabs exactly where they fell um, so if i figured that was my best chance of, get, of bolting the motor plate secure to the timing chain cover and that should put it straight but if it's slightly it's slightly off then your motor plates may be slightly so off. so we use the straight edge you put your straight edge across the face of this one and the face of that one that adjusts in and out this one adjusts in and out this one has way more play movement than that one does um and you check it but this one the crank was running crooked compared to that one which what it really is is the crank is straight that one's crooked so what we did was we had to come in here and shim back there one washer so that thing is i know it looks funky but it is extremely tight it is um as tight as i can get it and that just makes that lollipop bracket sit actually straight um, with the front of the motor and makes the lollipop bracket a 90 off of the crank, which is what you want, uh, being the actual mount is not 100% straight. Now, I know that these things have shoulders that they, they ride inside of, so a lot of it will stay uh, in between there, but you still want to try to get it as straight as possible. Uh, so what we'll have to do is once we get this thing running is we'll have to just check and make sure the belt's not riding against one side or the other. And if it is, we'll have to use shims and make adjustments to the lollipop bracket until we get it where it's running right. I just threw a random washer in there. We can use, you know, like brake shims like we did on the brakes uh, to index that thing, you know, where it puts that in a perfect line uh, if we have any issues. Uh, I just pulled it over hand tight. It's what I've always seen John and everybody do is just pull this pump hand tight and then snug it down. You don't want a lot of tension on this belt um, at all. So that's done. I'm gonna continue on 
putting trans fluid in there. We actually stopped to go out uh, to get these bolts. And then we can move on with some other stuff. Uh, assembly, we need to change the blower pulley. We need to get the blower belt on. And then we need to get charge pipe in here. And uh, then I think it's gonna be electrical. It's gonna be quite a bit of electrical work. Uh, we need to also go ahead, I picked up the water. So we need to get the water put in, see if there's any leaks, and we need to wire up our water pump so we can see if the water flows uh, correctly with this pump up front. All right, so put the Pro Charger belt back on. Um, and of course, in true nature, we have more problems. Um, I didn't plan for the belt clearance. So we cleared the lollipop just barely. I think we'll be fine. Uh, it doesn't hit anything at all so there's nothing sharp near it or anything so if it does slap um it if it does slap anything it's just gonna slap the lollipop but as you can see we got clearance on that but we do not have clearance on our um hose right here so we're gonna have to uh, make some changes real fast on this now really all this needs to do is just go up but i have to get it to go up um is the is the thing so we need to work on our mount a little bit more it's going to be, be bent the angle is going to be changed a little bit so that it does not come close to uh the blower belt all right so we got uh all this put together and uh simple hose change harper did we change that hose yeah yeah we changed that hose out we just put this other one on that we had uh and made it kick up uh just to make sure that it has obviously plenty of clearance this time um from the pro charger belt we went ahead and got our uh charge pipe back on blow off valves back on got all of them back plumbed no it is not symmetrical this time if i would have uh clocked thought about it and clocked the blow off valve where this hole was about right here then we could have had symmetrical but we're not worried about it right now um this time i made it a little bit more simpler um i literally just come off the vacuum block hit our regulator teed it off of there hit our blow off valve, teed it off of there to hit both of them. Whereas last setup, I pulled one whole line to the regulator and one whole line to the blow off valve. Hold on, Harper. So this time we made it more simple and we pulled off the blow off or the vacuum block to our regulator and then teed off a regulator to there. Um, not 100% sure if that is okay, but I guess it is because it's all just vacuum or whatever. Um, hopefully it should work. So we are... We're really close now to being able to come off. Harper, we're really close to coming off the jack stands, yes. right? Yeah. You about ready to put the car on the floor? Yeah. We got one plugged wire in the back. And then I think this thing can come off jack stands. But what we'll do first is we'll go ahead and make sure we get water in it and make sure we don't have no leaks or anything. And then we got to do, uh, we got to wire this stuff up front. So I'm going to keep uh, getting at it and slowly making progress. But everything... Uh, clears great. Our charge pipe clears our tensioner. Uh, everything clears. And the lollipop actually uh, even has more clearance now because when I showed y'all that, there wasn't a belt on it, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't tight. Daddy, yes, Harper. Look at my feet. Look at your feet. Let me see them. They're dirty. Yeah, yeah mommy is gonna be really mad with you. Wait, look at my feet. Yeah, I see your other feet. They're nasty and they got metal on them. You're gonna get metal in your feet if you don't go put your Crocs on. No. All right, so we got the water pump running, and you hear it. So we've got the car jacked up higher in the front, and I kind of did it as a sealed system, kind of. Um, I kept cracking the radiator in the rear open. I've been working on it for about 20 minutes, so it's not, it's not the easiest thing to do, but I think I got it. I think is the key word there. Um, you can hear the water flowing back here barely which is a good sign because so basically being you don't hear the water because we were hearing it a second ago you know you hear like that because there's air pockets through it now everything's flowing really smooth water pump has a beautiful wine to it uh, it doesn't sound glitchy like it was as it was working air pockets out. But basically, combination of with the front end up in the air, uh, topped my coolant. I let the pump run and cut it off, topped my coolant, 
and then go to the back, open that radiator cap, and you could actually hear some air coming out, and then all of a sudden water would start flowing out. And so then come back up here with the water pump off, top your water back in there again to the top, and then, you know, just back and forth and just mess with it, just, you know, keeping the water out or the air pockets out the front, the back. I was trying to do it with it running, but it seems like it was just glitching too much with it running, um, probably sucking air in, you know, and then throwing air back into a pocket. So it seemed like it was best to do with the electric pump not running, front end higher, and then that way gravity, no water's moving. Uh, the motor is really low already. So that way nothing's moving and we can get the air out of it. Now you can see right here, our fill cap to these lines right here. These are coolant lines right here. Um, they're a little bit higher than that, it seems like. So we could need, you know, to make a change on these really probably should bend this thing down and route it underneath there or something. But right now it feels pretty good. It has a little bit of a pulsing, not pulsing, just you can feel it, uh, the water flowing through it, but it sounds good. It's not like, it's not jerky, like it had its air in it like it did before. Um, so I really feel like that we got this in the bag. Man, you don't even hear the freaking water running back here at all now um now that it's been done and there's nothing in our overflow i did have that open and i messed with that because that's a pretty high point too just a combination of just trying to let the water escape is all i've done so we're gonna go ahead and i'm gonna finish buttoning up the the wires on the front end and then go ahead and set the car down and i think the only electrical we got left is the fuel pressure regulator should be it. I got to order a different sensor. Let's see what it does when I open this. There it is. The water's at the top. Water's right there at the top. So I'm not the smartest and I don't know the most, but I feel like, because what it was doing when it was taking air is every time you open it, the water was not at the top. Um, I feel like we're good now. Opened it up, water's at the top feel like we're good to go. I uh, think we can set the car down and then we will reevaluate it again and make sure it's not trapping air somewhere with the car sitting down on a level ground. I'm basically gonna cross all my T's and dot all my I's and make sure that I don't have no hidden issues that I don't know about. All right, Harper, what you thinking? Yeah. Huh? Is the car done? Yeah. Did you get all the nuts and bolts? Yeah. You got everything good? Yeah. Okay. I think we are ready for first startup, almost. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> I keep saying that. Um, what we basically re need right now, I got to check the checklist, but we need fuel. Uh, we got to put fuel in it, and I got to do this one sensor. I just took it off jack stands. Um, got it back on the ground. Um, I think, I really feel like we are ready for first startup. Uh, we just have to load the tune, put fuel in it, do that sensor, rock and roll. It's Saturday afternoon. We got to go to 710. Uh help Randy and them. So I got to find fuel also, but if I can find fuel this afternoon or Sunday morning, even if I snag some of Randy's, then we might try to first start up tomorrow on Sunday. Stay tuned. Harper, are you ready to crank the car? Yeah. First start up on methanol? Yeah. <laughs> All right, but we're not going to crank it right now. Why? We'll do it like tomorrow. Why? We'll try it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Do you think the car's going to crank? Yeah. Cause I don't have no gas right now. Why? Ain't got no gas. Why? It ain't got no gas. Why is it going to crank up? Why is it going to crank up? Yeah. Because we just changed it over, so hopefully we're good to go. Give me a high five. Tell everybody bye-bye on the camera. Bye-bye. Say, I'll see you later. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, I'll catch y'all on the next one.